And recently I'm like, okay, I gotta focus more on what I want to do in life, what I want to do with my comedy career, what are my goals. If I want to succeed in comedy and sort of grow, there does have to come a time we have to dial it in. I come from like that sort of, you know, working class area of Scotland and no one has ambition or goals or like if you're sort of an artistic kind of person it's always kind of shit on and you know your your whole life is destined to just kind of like work in a factory, marry a girl from high school. So now going into the new year I'm like yeah I need to step up the comedy I mean step up the life game. If you put in the time and effort and sculpted your set and did all the work and all that you'll feel satisfied because you worked for it. It's Johnny Late Night! And now here's your host, Johnny Rogers! So, welcome everyone to episode number 67 of the Johnny Rogers Show. My guest today is a professional stand-up comedian, actor, writer, and podcaster, originally from Glasgow, Scotland. He started his stand-up career in 2014, where in his first year came second in the Toronto Comedy Brawl, a competition with over 500 performers. From there, he quickly became a staple in the Toronto stand-up scene, opening for traveling acts and performing all over the country at comedy festivals. His high energy and storytelling have made him a crowd favorite and one of Canada's brightest new acts. Plus, his new comedy special is now available on YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for my friend and yours, Mr. John Mostyn. Hey, what's up? Uh, that was a good intro. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's me? Okay, that sounds good. I feel like doing well. Yeah. <laughs> I always love bios for uh, comedians because it's also a chance to remind yourself of the shit that you've done in your career thus far. Because I feel like we get lost in the in the process, right? Like it's Well, yeah. Well, actually, like that's, that bio is like, I've never read had it read out by anyone. So it like actually sounds like I'm like, oh, I, that sounds legit. <laughs> <laughs> book him. It sounds like I should book him for my Christmas parties. <laughs> I know. I'd pick that guy for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so your uh, topic for the podcast today was focus. Yeah. Um, what is it something that you think, you know, you need to work on more or have you like, yeah, what what's what's the, your thought process behind the word focus? Well, that was just the word that popped into my mind. And that's something that I actually been, uh, this has been, I, I want to say focus, but like, I want to be, it's been my, like, I've been very, I've, most of my life I've been very an unfocused person, undisciplined person. And recently I'm like, okay, I got to focus more on what I want to do in life, what I want to do with my comedy career, what I want, where I want to be going, what I want to be, what are my goals. And like, actually like, Go after stuff so and i've always been very like you know yeah like un, uh, the opposite of that you know unfocused undisciplined not really having any goals just kind of just get coasting through my life and i was like well you know if i want to succeed in comedy and sort of grow and you know there does have to come a time we have to dial it in mm -hmm. so for for going into the new year uh that's that's my big thing. Um, I'm obsessed with like, like people's routines, morning routines, habits. Because again, that's something I never had grown up. So, um, that's something I've been trying to like learn as an adult, which is uh, very difficult when you've not had that your whole life. Yeah, no, especially like, you know, you move different countries, so it's like there's there's not even just a focus on. You know the day to day it's like you have other external things that are kind of like yes you can focus on your day to day but i bet there was some like cultural shifts or changes that needed to happen as well when you're coming here because i guarantee that the the way that people work in scotland might be a little bit different from the way that people work in canada versus in america versus you know wherever else italy there's a different way that people work like mm -hmm. i wonder if that almost impacts people's like start point for focus or for you know determination hard work integrity name name your name your buzzword that you want to put in there right of things that people want to work on that usually come up in life did you find yeah uh, like i think sorry go on no no go ahead go ahead oh well, i was gonna say well i mean i feel like it, i don't know so much of a cultural difference per se but i definitely grew up in a world that I wasn't like, uh, 
in that sort of creative. I never grew up in a creative world. I always grew up in a sort of. I came from like that sort of you know, working class burnt area of like Scotland, and everyone's just kind of like no one has ambition or like uh, goals or like you know. And no art. If you're sort of an artistic kind of person, it was always kind of shit on, and you know your your whole life was destined to just kind of like you know work in a factory, marry a girl from high school, you know, not complain about your life, drink at the weekends, go on holiday <laughs> once a year, all that kind of stuff. And like that kind of just like you're basically just coasting through life with no not really getting anywhere for your life. And so I mean the, I mean moving to Canada really was a game changer for me because first of all, you know, doing stand up comedy for the first time, like working in like Toronto, one of the best comedy scenes arguably in the world and you're with people who are so talented, so hardworking, so disciplined, so focused. And, you know, if you're not, if you're not like, you know, leveling up with those guys, you're, you're going to get left behind. And uh, so definitely that was like, you know, work, working and being friends with so many talented, hardworking people is, it's been tough, you know what I mean? Like, but it's also been very like motivating. You're just like, yeah, I mean, these guys are working hard. I'm like, I can do that. But like when, it, you know, a lot of people I know come from a world of like being disciplined by their parents where they have jobs and being university and stuff like that. And so now as, so now going into the new year, I'm like, yeah, I need to step up the comedy. I mean, step up the life game uh, and focus is something I've always like struggled with. Um, but I'm getting there and it's slow steps. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I like what you said about, you know, just being around people who already are kind of implementing, you know, creativity or focus or motivation into their own life. How it makes it so much easier to pursue that even comedy in general. Like I came from Brockville is a small Ontario town. There's not really a lot of people there that are wanting to pursue stand up comedy or arts in general, yeah. right? It's the exact same thing you just talked about. Go work in the factory or go work as a nurse in a hospital, like meet your significant other, get your house, go on the odd vacation. And like me looking at that, I was like, I just don't. I had friends who had not comedy interests, but they're interests and motivations and focus were so outside of that, that I think it helped kind of start turning that within myself to like, oh, I need to go, you know, I moved to Toronto for a reason to surround myself with comedians who are like way better than I could ever possibly be so that it would motivate me to get up to that level. Yeah, I, what, I grew up, uh, actually, I, I lucked out in my life. I started, when I was like high school, all the people I started hanging out with were people who were actually creative people came from creative families musicians mostly and everyone played in bands and stuff like that and i even remember when we were playing in bands like i remember i was, I was thinking about this recently one of my friends was always like you need to practice an hour a day your instrument you know you need to do it be this and and i remember thinking that's crazy i'm not going to practice <laughs> I, I had a friend who said the same that's, thing to me <laughs> but, but that's but like and and now i find that i'm like of course it's like of course but back then i was just like yeah an hour are you kidding you know, my, my focus when growing up was like just drinking and doing drugs and watching TV and wasting my life basically. And all these guys, I mean, a lot of my <clears> friends <throat> went on to like a lot of success in, uh, in music. And what what happens, and it, and it happens in comedy as well, because you have your friends in life and they're they're focused and they're disciplined and they're hardworking and succeeding. At some point, they're going to level up and like they'll always be your friend, but they kind of you kind of drift away from them because you have to maintain a level of like still hang like you know if you if you want to be successful in any sort of food you have to hang out with other like-minded people mm -hmm. and if you're not like-minded then it's hard for someone who's like a hard-working disciplined person to hang out with someone who's lazy doesn't do any work isn't yeah, yeah. as much as you like that person you're like I, I i can't be surrounded by these people because it's a negative thing and i was kind of the I was always the kind of like the, the the person that wasn't leveling up, right? So, uh, and I I I've sort of over the last few years sort of realized that comedy, it's like I can't rest my my laurels at all, and also like you know with the, the world of comedy these days and the social media and the way the industry works, it's like if you're not working hard, man, it's like you're not going to get anywhere, and no one's going to give you, any. and you know you're going to live a very mediocre existence, which is like like being a mediocre comedian is 
worse than not being a comedian at all. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I love that to like us. That's the worst thing. But to someone who just works at like the factories, like we talked about, they're like, who cares? You know what I mean? Like, our 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 like, because I'm the exact same as you. My focus is like, I gotta get better at comedy. I gotta like hit the. I gotta put out a clip or something. I gotta like stay on this. I gotta keep screaming into the internet until more people notice me, so I can have yeah. a career doing comedy. That's like the path now, right? Um, part of this podcast, even too, is a chance for me to like connect with people and like get better at just like talking long form yeah. not necessarily needing to be funny every single second but just like getting that comfort of like we're gonna hang and chat for the hour you know that's that's uh that's like doing comedy on easy right like there's some people it, it, watch it, this <laughs> it's, and it's it's hard to do because you know like you know you're doing your podcast and you know what do you say this is a 67th episode right so you're like 67 episodes is like yeah i mean how many like you know sometimes back at the start you, no one's listening to it yeah only 50 people 100 people whatever and you just feel like you know you're getting nowhere but if you have to focus and you know what your goal is with podcast and you have a reason to do it like i listened to just out of interest it wasn't I, was, I think it was during the pandemic or something i was like i was really interested to see what the first ever joe rogan podcast sounded like just out of interest because it's like so big and I'm not, I don't listen to the podcast a lot, but I was just thinking, I was like, I wonder what that was like. And I, I went back to their very first episode and it was one of the worst things I've ever seen. <laughs> it's so life. bad. They have no right? idea what they're but, doing. They're too high. Like <laughs> yeah, they're, they're high. They're, they're on some fucking, they're, I, it, it doesn't even make sense. It's so confusing. Yeah. Right. So, but, but back then it's like, but you know, regardless of what you think, but Joe Rogan, whatever, it's like, he just kept doing it every week, every week, every week, every week, kept doing it, getting bigger, bigger, better. Right. So, uh, you know, um, it, but that takes focus as well. When you talk about focus, it's like sometimes mm -hmm. you're like, why, why bother? I'm not getting anywhere. Yeah. But like, what, what I've realized with, you know, doing a lot of like, you know, inner work with myself, it's like, yeah, you gotta have patience. I have been like the most impatient person in the entire life, right? But like, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, I, I stopped drinking like six years ago, and once I stopped drinking, I was like, I had to start paying real attention to myself. You know what I mean? Because I didn't have a distraction anymore, and spending that time sort of like going inward and sort of like looking and, and like focus actually one of the big thing i'm trying to do a lot as well is like not even so much points even like just focusing on yourself mm -hmm. mentally physic physically not caring so much about the external what people think of you or, or 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 trying to fit in here or whatever else is going on in the world right it's like it's it's creating a focus to like and, and it's very difficult it's challenging i think about this all the time i'm just like okay what are my goals what am i trying to do where am i trying to get in life and it, it um it's hard it's, it's difficult and it takes it takes real effort and it takes consistent practice but again that's if you lose that focus you just kind of go back to no you, you don't get anywhere you know what i mean mm -hmm. and it's almost too like important i think to know when to shift focus because you could be mm. fo like trying to focus really hard on something that's not moving the needle it's not really getting you any further along right like i think a lot of time people confuse like you know they always say like either you work hard or work smart um and i think a lot of people are like working too hard on something like they'll be you know trying to think like of an example of it but you know what i mean like how people will often be like way too focused on one thing when it's not even the thing that brings them joy right like if we're well, if we're ultimately yeah. talking about like getting further ahead and having focus with something it tends to be the thing you want to focus on is the thing that's going to either a make you financially more successful uh more successful with like reaching your goals and ambitions or making yourself feel healthy and better like i need to put my focus on my health so i'm going to go to the gym that's a direct result right yeah i think uh some people can lose their focus on the wrong things for example like people will like work too much at a job they hate because they, they need money to get to pay rent they got food whatever um uh, or they can lose hope, like they like for example like it's so important to like for me uh, i personally think it's so important to like exercise and make time for it but a lot of people don't because they're like oh, i don't have time i'm too tired 
but like that's the reason why you should be fucking exercising is because mm-hmm. you, you you find time because if you're if you're not in good shape you, you, you can't be there for your family or your friends or whatever um so people and i think like you know just the way we live in our lives it's like yeah people work a job and they have to pay rent and they have to pay their bills so their focus is the short term of like okay i gotta do this so they go well i can't i can't focus on learning to play the piano or acting yeah. career or reading or, or writing that book i was always going to write because they're like because you can't see the long term because they're like there's no money in it or it might not work out so they have to focus on the day-to-day of like okay i hate this job i have to go there to make money you know but like they don't give themselves enough time to to pursue their own thing right so yeah yeah, yeah you're right well and a lot of people too they think that like if I do this, it takes away from this other thing. Mm. And that's not necessarily true, right? Like if, if I decide that I'm gonna hang out with my friends uh, for a weekend instead of doing comedy for the weekend, let's say, my old way of thinking was, oh, it's taking away my time on stage. I'm gonna get worse because I didn't do those shows. But in reality, it's not because I'm connecting with friends. I'm getting that like, you know, mental health benefit of being around people and feeding off of their energy. And most of the time, something happens that ends up becoming a bit towards comedy anyways, right? Like if your brain, if you're a comedian, I'm saying your brain is always thinking about like, where's the next, you know, bit coming from or a joke, and you're kind of always mining your life for these things, more life experiences is actually the better thing for your art. Nobody wants to hear the comedian on stage talking about like, how shitty their first class flight was and how their Porsche is still in the garage. And like, yeah. you know, just like talking about things that people can't relate to. Well, if you, if you don't have your life experiences, then you can't talk about it on stage. So that, and that happens to a lot of comics where they just, they're constantly just out doing shows all the time. They don't take time to like go on a holiday or see their friends. And, uh, and that can affect, you know, you end up just, you know, it, it, you struggle for material that way, but, I mean, like you're very much like you know, uh, what's the word like work life balance of like you also need to do stuff outside of what you're doing mm-hmm. to to either to recharge you, to motivate you, or just you know because like sometimes like you know, uh, you know you can be just it, it can be depressing just like if you haven't seen your friends for ages because you've just been doing comedy for forever, but like you have to you have to have these things you have to you have to go connect with people. You have to go out on a holiday once in a while. If that takes over, if that starts taking over your life, you're partying all the time, you're always out with your friends, you're always going on holiday, then yeah. sure, that's the wrong way to look at it. Yeah, but yeah. like, you, you have to, you have to be charged and you have to uh, prioritize a lot of, that's a, my mother focus a lot for the next year is like mental health, you know what I mean? Because I mean, that's a big topic these days just because of pandemic and life and stuff like that. But like, you have to have that balance of, you know, exercise, eating right, working on your own stuff, seeing your friends, going outside. But yeah, but it's 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 uh, focusing on where to use your time correctly. Mm-hmm. I want to ask you too because you ran an Ironman race, right? Mm, yeah. When did you run that Ironman? Oh, I did two actually. Uh, you did two. I've done two, and I've done like, I think three Olympic triathlons, I think, but that was back in like 2018, 2019. Wow. Definitely, so what was yeah, the focus definitely. like there during that time period? Were you like, I well, have to be uh, all about this? Well, so I, I stopped drinking in six years ago. I guess it's 2016, right? So I remember when I stopped drinking. I well, was let's like, start with that. Yeah. What made you stop drinking? That's a good Comedy. Like, start point. Comedy, Comedy made you stop so- drinking? So I mean, we were talking before with like you know how we how our environment was like you know growing up working a factory don't have any ambition you know, and I was always like I don't want to have this life. I didn't know I could pursue my own dreams right. So 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 what I did instead was drink, party, do drugs, waste time, distract myself, get out of my my life right. Uh, and then you know when I moved to Canada, I, I came over here and. It, you know, I, I came to Canada, so people always ask why I came to Canada. I really came to Canada just to, like, I was just coming on a one-year working holiday visa um, just to kind of get away from that life. But I, I was always planning on coming back, but 
I think subconsciously I was trying to just escape that life to get away and hope that something would work out and it did so I started doing stand-up and then I was doing stand-up I don't know a year or so maybe and I was getting drunk all the time and I was just like a mess and I was like and then for the first time first time in my entire life I was like good at something I was in a community of people that like like like-minded people I was like, I enjoyed doing it. I'd never, I never, and I was like, I can, and I was like, I, oh, I can actually have a career in this as well, mm. right? And I never, I never thought like that before. So, I, but then I was like, I was like, but if I keep drinking, I'm going to fuck this up. I'm not going to get anywhere. So I just made the decision. I was like, I got to stop drinking. Um, so, so I stopped drinking and it took, a, you know, it, it took a bit of time to sort of actually stop drinking, you know, but like the, you know, there was, um, there was a guy, forget his name but he was talking about like you know how like uh, addiction is not about like people like you know just being addicted to drugs it's, it's just because they don't have the they, they don't have community in their life you know what i mean they don't yeah have, uh, like a sense yeah of, uh, like a, and, and a, i was a gonna say that's people... excellent wherewithal on your part because a lot yeah. of times people will form these distractions in their life and then even when they see the light and they're like, oh, this is the new way. I'm going to be surrounded by this community. I'm going to do comedy. I'm going to be in this. They'll carry over the old distractions, you know, drinking, doing yeah. drugs. Like they don't know how to like for me, um, I, I, I quit smoking cigarettes. I still smoke like a vape to keep myself weaning off of it. But I don't crave like smoking an actual cigarette anymore. Like it kind of like it disgusts mm. me, but I realized that it was like a distraction and an excuse really that I had carried over from when I was working as a server. Cause smoking a cigarette as a server is like a lifesaver. It felt well, like, you, it. It you, like you don't get, you don't get a break otherwise. You, you don't get a break and you're on your yeah. feet for eight hours. So this is a chance to yeah. step outside, right? And like have a cigarette and then come back inside. And it was always that. And then I stopped being a server and I kept smoking. <laughs> like, that's what I kept yeah. from it. I was like, what am I doing? I, I just had to tell myself, like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, it yeah, just doesn't make sense you, to keep doing it. And you, could, and you can definitely, like, and I've worked in the restaurant, so I totally get that. But, like, you can definitely, like, you know, get into comedy and drink and do drugs and party and have sex with people and fucking all that shit, right? And that's fine, right? And, like, if you want to do that, that's fine. But for me, I was like, oh, this is something I want to pursue. And it's a lot of work and it's hard. And I think, like, if I keep drinking, I'm just going to be a mess and I uh, might fuck it up somehow. And and I think deep down, I kind of always wanted to. I I, I think I always kind of when I reflect on drinking, right? It was just part of culture. I mean, Scotland's just a big drinking culture. It's like basically like everyone in Scotland is basically like you would cut like such a heavy drinker that you would probably be class alcoholics. You know what I mean? Like just a whole yeah, nation yeah. of people drinking, right? But like we we were just so used to it, and um, I grew up like that. But like when I found comedy, I was like, "Oh, that's what I was looking for. I was looking for that." So then it gave me the reason and excuse to stop drinking. I never really, I never really enjoyed drinking. I like getting out of my head. I didn't actually. Mm -hmm. But then when I look back at these nights and these parties and all the fucking stuff that went with it, I was like, "Well, I didn't like any of that," you know. Yeah. Um, so so then I quit. So I quit, and then once I quit. I was like, well, if now that I'm not drinking, it's like I have to have something to focus on, like, and I have to do something that's physically demanding to like punish myself, punish my body. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that's essentially it. So, um, yeah, yeah. I can't. I'm trying to remember. Like, I think like I, I remember thinking to myself, what is something that I like is fucking crazy that I've never done that would be fucking cool, and I don't know why. I just decided on triathlon and I don't know why I can't remember, but I just remember thinking well, that sounds hard, but also sounds kind of cool, like interesting. So I signed up for a uh, Olympic triathlon on, in Toronto. Uh, but uh, at the time, like when I did it, I like, I didn't realize how much hard work it goes into. So I was kind of half-assed the training. And when I did the triathlon, I did it, but it was fucking hard. It was brutal. I was like, mm. you, you jump in that water and you're just like, struggling you know you don't yeah, realize how yeah. like that. but then after after i finished i was like fuck yeah this is fucking good but like uh I, I went so i moved on and then i was like i'm gonna do an iron man right um but iron man requires a bit more you can't you can't like fuck around with an iron man because it's like it's it, i i could scrape out a triathlon right 
you know. Um, but like the Iron Man is took a yeah. In, t- in terms of focus, like you have to train. You, you can't really miss training days. You have to watch what you're eating, all that kind of stuff. And it actually it was good. I remember when I was doing it, it was actually really good because it just gave me something to do mostly. When because I was just you know, I, I just give me a focus to kind of keep me distracted from thinking mm-hmm. about, you know, whatever. And I, I'll be honest, I got in fucking, I, I look back at some, some pictures from that and I was like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, that was in amazing shape. And then, and then I look at myself now after two years in a pandemic, I'm all fat. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, like, so, <laughs> You're like, so, I like so, Iron so, Man Marston. <laughs> I know, but I, I, at the time, I, at the time, I didn't even realize that. And I look back at people yeah. and I'm like, holy shit. So I actually just signed up for one in July because I was like, nice. after the pan- well, the, the pandemic, like for everyone, like fuck me, like mentally, you know, and like I put on weight because I was just eating shit all the time. And then, and then this, this carried over once we started coming back out into the world. Uh, and then I was like, yeah, I got to get in shape again. So again, that's uh, talking of focus. I was like, I need to work on mental and physical health and discipline. So for an Ironman, you got, you, I was like, you got to, you got to have a bit of discipline. And you got to be focused because you can't really fuck about with it. So, so that's I signed up for that. And that's in July. Uh, so I'm excited. Like I'm excited and nervous because uh, you know the training is a lot, and a lot of the training you have to do in fucking winter time, which is brutal. Mm. But um, but you know, once you start, just it's it's about just flipping that mindset of going, okay, this is what I'm doing now, and it's tough for a bit, and it's always a bit tough, right? And even the day of the race, fucking. It's so tough, but like it's you know it's like when you know after you do it, you're like, well, that was kind of amazing as well. But when you're doing it, you're like, fuck this, what am I fucking doing? <laughs> you know what I mean, I I've never done an Ironman, but I had uh, I've ran two five Ks. The first one I didn't train for at all, and it yeah. felt like the hardest thing I'd ever done in my life. And then the second one I actually did train for and trained like with a running group. I don't know if you've ever been in the running room, but they had this group where they would like do every Wednesday and Friday or something, you'd meet up and it was all to train for this like 5k race. And it was 10 times easier just with putting in two days a week of work. It made that like, I couldn't believe how fast like my funny to say that, but like how fast my running had grown. Like I just felt lighter when I ran, like everything felt like it was working together. Like it bore before it was like a struggle. It felt like I was care, like slugging my body along. And I think I can't remember who said this, but I honestly truly believe this It's like our brain, whenever we do something, our brain is kind of like, like fresh powder on a ski hill, right? Like there's the natural paths, that have been carved that you're like, it's, if I go down this path, it's going to be super easy. I know how to do it. It's going to get me right to the bottom quick, no problems. Right. But if I want to trudge a new path, it's going to be a little bit harder. Like I'm going to have to like trudge through this snow a little bit, but then when I come back up the hill, that path is there from last time. So it makes it even easier to go down that path again. And you can say that for bad habits and good habits too. Right. Sure. Um, yeah, it, it's, um, but you're talking about the 5k it's like if you do something with no training it's like you do it and you get through the, the, the finishing line there's no joy in it whatsoever no it's like yeah. um but it i actually ran a marathon and did no training and it was one of the most painful experiences of my fucking life i felt like and but the, the thing was when i crossed i crossed the finish line and i got the medal i didn't feel any satisfaction i'd run a marathon but I hadn't trained, so there was no mm. sense of uh, completion or whatever. And it's just it's the same with comedy. It's like, for example, like if you if you if you start a comedy and then you you get just for laughs right off the bat, but you haven't like it's it's the, it's all the work towards it's all the path. It doesn't mean practice. the same. Yeah, it doesn't mean it. All these things are just like you just practice, practice, practice. It's all training, training, training. And when something like that does happen, it's like. Yeah, it's just part, it's another part of the journey. But if you're just like work, you're trying to fast track it and then you get it, it's going to make you depressed and miserable. And I know people that have like done that with uh, comedy festivals where they've come out the gate hot of comedy, got it, felt no satisfaction with it. And then they're depressed because they're like, well, that was, that was my goal in comedy and then it didn't yeah. really matter. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, but so that's the thing is like now it's like in, in all aspects of life, it's like consistent 
deliberate practice and everything because when you when you run that 5k the second one i bet when you crossed the line you felt so much more fulfilled way better you know yeah. what i mean and it's the same with comedy it's like whenever you get to do a festival or do something cool if you put in the time and effort and sculpted your set and did all the work and all that yeah you'll feel the the, the, the event itself doesn't really mean much it's nice to do mm -hmm. but like you'll feel satisfied because you worked for it i like the the comparisons too between like running and doing stand-up comedy because like for comedy i'm always yeah they both suck they both suck <laughs> they both they're suck both while you're doing it <laughs> while you're preparing yeah. to do it so why but am like, i doing this <laughs> yeah why am i doing this to myself but like with comedy you're trying to get more time practice doing more time but running you're trying to get less time <laughs> Hey everybody, yeah. Johnny here. Just want to take a quick second to thank our newest Patreon subscriber, CLB. I appreciate your support, and because you are subscribed to the show for just a dollar a month, you're getting this episode before anyone else. If you want to be cool like CLB, head to patreon.com backslash the Johnny Rogers and join in on the fun. All right, now back to the episode. Yeah, but I find that, like, you know, um, it's, it's, it's the same with running as well. It's running and stand up, you know, you can't compare them because you can. You're out every night. You have to train every day for a certain thing. You're just training and training, and it sucks and it sucks and it sucks. But then some. But then you, when you look back and you're like, oh shit, I've come a long way, and I didn't even mm -hmm. realize it. You look back at the start when you, you know, you, you when you couldn't even run a kilometer. Now I've just fucking ran a marathon. You know, and yeah. you can compare that to the same with stand up. It's like doing open mics, doing open mics, doing open mics for years. Nothing's happening. Nothing happened. Next thing you know, you. I released an album you've opened up these big comics you've done festivals and you're like oh shit fuck it. and it just you know you, you realize yeah, that yeah. a switch goes yeah. off almost for both running yeah. and comedy where you're like oh i can actually do this but like yeah there's so many oh there's so many times though where like somebody wants to even start the process and they talk themselves out of it like we talk about like people often use time as a reason to get out of working out like oh, i don't have enough time it's like no you're just not prioritizing mm. your goals yeah. right like i think that's so so key and i love that you have like a focus on the year you're like this year i'm focusing on mental health and physical health and it's like we can we can almost look at our lives like that as like each year could be a, you know, a new chapter of you just only focusing on that one thing for the year and giving it that attention that it needs for that whole year. You can still do your other stuff. You've just moved it up in your priority list. And so now, you know, maybe going on a holiday takes a break this time because this isn't the year I'm relaxing and recovering. I'm training for this marathon or I'm training for this triathlon or I'm trying to do, you know, weekends at clubs, whatever the, the mm. goal might be. Yeah, and that's that's uh, I mean, it's, it's something that I also like for a long time never had any goals, like really like in stand up or just in life really like I never was one of those people that had goals and met them, and I, I realized like, you know, over the course of time I'm like sometimes you're like, you know, like oh I'm I'm just doing stand up I'm just doing sets doesn't matter I'm just doing and it, I'm not even writing the cue I'm just getting through the motions of doing it and I'm like why the fuck am I doing this and then I'm like. Okay, what's uh, I had to like sort of like reassess and like I thought to myself like, okay, what are my values of like what's important to me, and then like mental and physical health is number one because mm -hmm. without that, I don't I, being being the best sort of or, or or working towards being the best version of yourself, like mentally, physically, will also make you creatively. A better comic is, or you know if it a spiritual practice will make you a better comic you know it's um uh but you got to have goals you got to work towards low goals yeah um i never done that before so recently i've just been like okay what how am i going to next what's in, how do i get to the next level of just life how do i become a i'm always like i, I think that's like like what what does the best version of myself look like you know like I don't know, if, don't know if I'll ever achieve the peak best version of myself, but like every year I want to be getting better. I want to. I mean, I'm. I just uh, on Thursday I turn forty two. You know, you do uh, not look forty two. Right <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you gotta drop the skincare routine in the. <laughs> yeah, well, the skincare routine is uh, um, living a life of debauchery for most of your life and not drinking enough. I always water. love not that. 
my girlfriend fucking hates me because like she's like you don't do anything like you don't put on yeah. like moisturizer or you don't wash yeah. your face that much and like and i'm like i yeah. don't know it's just like I, I don't know any dude that does do that <laughs> yeah girls like, <laughs> girl spend so much time on the skincare routines and then guys just have this money. great skin for no reason i know I no reason we don't need it no reason but um but the reason but the reason i mentioned it as well was i was just like i'm like okay i'm like you know i'm not old but i'm not young either so the next ten, at least 10 years of my life from 40 to 50 or 40 to 52 that's going to really define what the rest of my life looks like so but if i don't have any focus and i don't have any goals i'm just going to be like this guy who just coasts along and then next thing i know i'm 52 i haven't mm -hmm. achieved anything I'm fat, I'm overweight, I'm depressed, I'm bitter, I'm miserable, I'm angry, whatever. I've seen that, I've seen that with people I know, people in my family, people's friends, dads, mums, dads, whatever. And it's a sad it's a sad existence. And um, you know, that's why I had to have that conversation with myself of like, okay, what do I want to get out of life and uh what are my goals and how am I gonna to work towards getting them? And instead of trying to do fucking ten million things at once. I'm like okay, I'm doing this Iron Man. I'm gonna after I just released my first album last uh, this year, but like so next year because now I'm like out of material mm -hmm. and I'm like okay, so so I need to write new material. I'm like, what am I writing about? So I have this idea for a, a one man show that I, I'm that I'm like that I think I can turn into stand up storytelling and a one man show, and maybe somewhere down the line like a, a, a even make, write it into like a TV show, right? So I'm like okay, I'm just gonna do it for 2023. I'm just doing that or as long as it's going to take me. So until I write this and finish it, that's all I'm going to do, perform it. Because for, for ages, I'm just like, I had no focus in stand up, just writing about whatever, not really like mm -hmm. focusing on anything. And I'm like, it's not really getting me anywhere. It's not really like, I'm not really like, you know, finding my own voice in comedy. And I'm like, I just, I'm, I was too concerned about what other comics are doing or what I think I should be doing, mm -hmm. you know, but now I'm like, now I'm like, no, I'm doing this. I'm you ever get some bad on advice on what you should be doing? I love that. Oh, I mean, people try and give me bad <laughs> advice all the time. They're like, oh, you should be doing this. You should be actually, uh, the one thing that I always get and I've always had it's like, uh, since I started doing comedy, people are always like, oh, you really need to be lean into being the, the Scottish guy. Right, <laughs> need to be more like the Scottish guy. And I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck that means, right? Because yeah, yeah. They want you to come like, up in a kilt and like. Yeah, I think so. Like, and just talk about haggis and shit, right? And I think yeah, it's like, yeah. Um, they want you to be Willie from it, The Simpsons. Yeah, <laughs> or or like a like a Scottish Russell Peters kind of thing, right? You know, and lean into, and you can, and you can, and honestly, like people in North America love all that kind of like Scottish shit, right? But like, for me, I was like. And I, I understand what people are saying because they're like, well, because what basically some people are saying is like, become the Scottish guy, become successful at that, then you can do anything, right? Mm -hmm. And there is, to me, there's some, I, I, I sort of understand that, but, um, you know, it, it, I, I don't really know what that means to be the Scottish guy either. And I don't really particularly want to be that. Mm -hmm. Like, because obviously, like, living in Canada as a Scottish person, as a comedian, you know, I'm always probably going to talk about Scotland or, or stuff like that, but I, I don't want to make it my whole thing. Um, I don't even know how, I don't even know what being a Scottish guy fucking means. But you should be like, an, you should be like the anti-Scottish guy. Like you just go up there and all your jokes about how you, you hit, you're from China and you hate Scottish people. And... Well, the joke about <laughs> you just go hard well, left. <laughs> well, actually there's a joke on my album uh, about, talking about how I hate Scottish people because there's a because people always come up to me in Canada and always like oh I'm 33 percent Scottish and all that kind of stuff and I'm like it's such a weird thing that people say that here because like Scotland's not this like amazing place that everyone thinks <laughs> it's like with castles and whimsy and you know all that brave heart and all all that shit right most of it's fucking pretty grim like you know there's so uh you know and and, and when whenever people uh here want to introduce me to other Scottish people. Other people, Scottish people here, we don't want to talk to each other because we don't <laughs> yeah. want to be rem we don't want to be reminded of back home because we've like kind of like escaped it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. So, so my joke was like, you know, because people are always like, "Oh, my grandfather moved here." And I'm like, "Yeah, your grandfather moved here because 
he hated Scotland so much that he came here before the internet, before there was trip, trip advisor. He got on a boat. Was, he had no idea where it was got going. On a boat. There was there was there was no brochures. There was no thing. And he was like, "Fuck it, that's better than living in Scotland." Yeah, and it's very and it's and it's very easy to be whimsical and romantic, romanticize mm-hmm. Scotland when you're not there. Yeah, <laughs> you know people mean? love and, to romanticize places, and I was like. It's probably yeah, not <laughs> like that. Yeah, people romanticize Scotland a lot too because it is quite, you know, there is some beautiful parts of Scotland. And I, I'm not really like, someone, some, some guy on YouTube was like giving me shit, some Scottish guy, like, oh, fuck you, you're fucking, you know, being hateful now. And I love like those YouTube comments. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. But, I, but the thing is, it's like, it's like a joke. If you, and like every Scottish person kind of like, we're, we're sort of low key, like, we kind of hate Scotland, but we also like will defend it. Oh you know, yeah. Someone talk, yeah, yeah. Someone yeah. talks about <laughs> Scotland. We're like, fuck you, know, Scotland's amazing. But like, but then most of the time we're like, fuck this place, fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah, like so. Like, Don't so, tell um, them that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, that's the kind of uh, yeah. It wasn't like bad. It's just advice. I was like, people always like. I think in comedy anyway, people try to be like, hey, be this person, be that person. I, and I, I kind of get it for a bit, but like, um. I, I don't know, man, like, as a, as a, as a, you know, if I, I try not to, I don't know, I, I don't like to try and give too much advice to people, because I, I stopped, I honestly stopped, because I'm, because I'm yeah. like, especially when it comes to, I, I can give advice on things that I really know, like, if, like, I know YouTube, you know, if, if I see someone that's trying at YouTube, and they're just like missing one thing, I'll send them a message and be like, Hey, why don't you try to do this? Like, just just some advice. Try to do that and see what happens. Like, uh, you know. But like when I used to like give people comedy advice sometimes, and I was like, I had to always add the caveat of though, like take that with a grain of salt because like I was told things, I was told to not do things when I started early on in my comedy career that are complete opposite now. Like somebody told me never post your jokes on YouTube, and now everyone has their yeah, comedy on YouTube. And I'm like, had I just yeah. not listened to this guy, you know what I mean? Like I could have been. Who knows where I could have been? I know. Well, that's the thing. I think it's. Uh, I think it's like advice is one thing. Uh, if it's unsolicited, right? But yeah, like, yeah, that's the worst. I, I would. Say, I would say like, and lots of people want to do it because you know everyone has their own idea of what. It's easier to look at someone else and say. We well, should be doing this and that. But mm-hmm. You should really be more focused on yourself. But, but what? And I've definitely probably done that over the years, right? Um, but now I'm now that I'm sort of like I've I've thought of these things through a bit more. I'm like I try I try, uh, to be more sort of encouraging people mm-hmm. rather than oh you should do this. I'm yeah. like keep doing keep doing what you're doing because you're saying like whatever like with YouTube you're like you just message people and be like hey. Like you're doing great, but like maybe this will take up a notch. Make it even better, and, yeah. Yeah, you're not telling people how to do their whole fucking thing, but you're yeah, you're yeah, yeah. Little, <laughs> you've got you've got a bit of expertise in it. You're giving them a little encouragement, and I think like for me, um, advice is yeah, it's one thing, and I'll take advice from people, uh, you know, um, but also like you, you have to like also take it with a grain of salt because you're like everyone's different and. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people give you good advice some people give you shit advice but you just kind of some people are there. giving you advice that like will like they're giving you bad advice on purpose like there are people out there that will just purposely give you bad advice so yeah, like but i think like going back to your point like if you are focused on your own goals and you know what you want to do and what you believe in you can take advice and it doesn't affect the way that you do things really it kind of is just yeah. like an extra piece of information maybe it lends itself to it maybe it doesn't but like i find when you're more when at least for myself when i'm more focused on a task and i get a piece of advice i go okay maybe i'll apply it maybe i'll apply it in five years from now i don't know yeah i don't i don't let it hinder my thoughts well sometimes people have like given me advice and i've not taken or i'll definitely listen to anyone's advice uh and i'll take it in and i will think about it but sometimes like people's advice I'll think of years later and go, oh yeah, I, I get yeah. that bit now. But um, but also like, yeah, you're talking about like if 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 you're so focused on your like your goals and what you're trying to achieve and you know what your plan, your purpose is, and what you're trying to get to, then you know any sort of advice, yeah, it, it can help. 
sometimes it can hinder but like if you if you know what you're trying to do yourself you, you kind of you can kind of just like ignore mm-hmm. it a little bit you know what i mean and you can just you don't have to yeah there's one thing that i've that. i've had to stop doing too is like asking for asking for advice like hey what do you think about this because it's whatever they say doesn't matter at the root of it what i realized again at least for myself was that was a distraction for me from the focus of what the actual goal is like my this right here my hip-hop album if i asked anyone should i make a hip-hop album nine years into comedy they probably would have said no but i didn't ask anyone i just found it really fascinating and i love the process so i did it but then when i faltered was i started asking people like hey what do you think of this song and some people tell me it's good or they tell me it's bad or i need to fix this part and then i became too fixated on you know the advice the good advice and the bad advice that it started to like blur my own creativity in that realm i had to stop doing music and go back to doing stand-up where it's way more independent right like the feedback i'm getting is directly from the crowd if they don't laugh it's not funny and i go back to the drawing board if they laugh okay i got something here i'm gonna move on but like as soon as i distracted myself from continuing to make music and asking for advice about the music i was making it killed the creative process for me yeah you can like uh you can definitely um you start like asking for advice sometimes you need to do it but i think sometimes it can be a distraction from just doing the thing for for me i've always found that like trusting learning to trust my gut is always the right sort of decision the external validation is is you know that's me just trying to like that's my that's my insecure side Mm -hmm. like do you like this what should i do like whatever but like generally speaking there's always so many times i'm like oh i should have just trusted myself i think that's what the issue is well it's like just trusting that you know what you're doing best in common is like like for example if i if i write a bit and it doesn't work i'm like i'm i'm a funny person i know i'm funny Mm -hmm. this is funny to me i just don't know how to make it funny yeah to them yeah yeah. but then if if, but but if i listen to people not laugh at it i might drop the bit because i think oh that sucks they didn't like that Mm. but what it actually is is i just haven't found a way to make to word it that they understand that we can relate to it or something and i've definitely dropped it and then years later thought about them and been like well that was actually a funny bit yeah i I, (laughs) I love it and i and i dropped that because people didn't like it or it wasn't funny or mm-hmm. whatever but again that that i mean that just comes with experience well, but again it's just trusting your gut that something's funny and if they're if they're not laughing it's just because you haven't found the right yeah you haven't to, figured out the right vehicle right right for yeah. it yeah no, i completely that, agree but, but that or you don't have the that. skills for it too right like you well, said the, so many times there's a bit that I was working on early in my career and I was like I can't figure out how to get this to an audience like I don't know how to craft this so that it's funny I know it's funny I leave it five years later I'm like oh I know I now have the skill set to know what to do with this and then that's can, also yeah. yeah that's also a thing like sometimes you can write a bit but your, your skill level is not at the point so that's also a good thing but um yeah it's um yeah y- yeah yeah y- you definitely, uh, fuck, I lost the train of thought. That's okay, man. <laughs> just like... There's a, the, here, let's transition. There's a question I love asking guests on the podcast um, is if you can make a phone call to 15 year old John, and give him a piece of advice knowing what you know now. Uh, without it, it doesn't affect your current timeline. This is a different timeline. Uh, what would you say to him? Uh, I would probably say more like, uh, I'd probably say, I would say, yeah, trust yourself. Go after the things you want to do. Because, for example, like, I would, when I was, like, being creative doing music and all that when I was 15, 16, there was a voice in my head that was like, this is stupid. It's not going to make any money. There's no there's no path to this. But that wasn't, but after doing therapy all these years, years later, I realized that that's not my voice. That was, like, the people I grew up with. That was my mm. family's voice. Um, and... If I tell myself 15 self stuff, 15 year old self something, it's like, yeah, you enjoy this music, making music, creating art, doing it. Just go for it. Just go for it and just fucking don't give it any 
second thoughts. Just go right at it. Don't worry about money. Don't worry about whatever. Just if you enjoy it, just go at it. And I, I kind of sometimes am pissed at myself that I, I, I let doubt slip into my mind. And, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's something I do regret because, uh, you know, when I was younger, I, I mean, I had so many opportunities for a lot of stuff and it, it self doubt, insecurity, and also just like, yeah, the voice in your head that's not mm-hmm. your voice. And learn it. And again, that comes back learning to trust yourself and having your own goals and your own focus. That when if someone says, Oh, well, you're never going to succeed, you don't know what you're doing, it's like, I don't care what that person's saying because I know exactly what I'm trying to do. So that's what I'd say to my 15 year old self. And I'd also tell him to uh, not do so many drugs. <laughs> I love there's always a little caveat added in there. Well, like, do, do, also, do don't some, do this. Do, <laughs> yeah. do some drugs, John, but not for free. Do half. Yeah. Whatever yeah, they give you, just do half. Yeah. Do a little bit, but you have to do some. I would say do some drugs sometimes, but yeah, not all yeah. the time. You know? But like, I would, yeah, that I would just tell my 15 year old self to just practice a bit more self love and just go after the things you want to do, which, you know, 15, like, I'm what, 20. Fucking, I can't do the math. But fucking <laughs> 20, 25 years later, I'm only yeah. just starting to learn that. So I, yeah. there's a big period in my life where I was just like, I could have done a lot more things. Now I can't go back. I can't sit there and regret it, personally. Because mm-hmm. it but, made you who you are, right? Like, honestly, and like you wouldn't have yeah. gotten to this point and had these experiences without needing to go through those periods of pain yeah, I, and self doubt, right? And I, I, for a long time, I was actually, like, I always saw that as a negative. But over the years, I, I realized I'm, like, even the bad times and all the stuff, whatever, I'm grateful for them, you know, because I am here at this point now. As much as if something sucked or I wasted time here or fucking fucked up an opportunity there, it's like, well, I'm here. And I can't do anything about the past anyway, so, like, I might as well just be grateful for it, thank my past self for it. And just keep continuing, you know? Yeah, no, 100%. Um, we're pull it around here. I'm trying to share screens so that I can tell the people where to follow you at. There we go. Uh, it's Johnny Mostyn on TikTok. Mostyn yep. Comedy. Oh, I pulled up your, uh, your oh, Iron God. Man there. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, the Instagram page. Oh, yeah. John... Uh, Moss and Comedy also on Twitter, and most importantly, go check out the comedy special Scottish C Asterix and T. <laughs> <laughs> Not trying to get kicked off of YouTube, John. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's on YouTube. There's so, like, there's so much like yeah. I um yeah. Did you have to? Did thing. you beep stuff out? No. I didn't <laughs> good, good, um, good. Well, I I um. Yeah, I released a special like video that put out and it's been doing well. Um so go check that out. Uh called Scottish Cunt. I'll say it, you know. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you can say it. let me say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most that'd be funny if that'd be funny as soon as I say it, they're like, mm-mm. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all I'll be honest though, like you know, Scottish people say that word a lot, but when a Canadian person says it, I'm like, uh It hurts, it feels weird. Like, oh, no, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think Canadian great. people should swear at all. It just sounds weird coming out of our mouths. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it, well, especially not the word, the, the C word, but uh, I'm also, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, mostly comedy for most things. And yeah, if you, if you check out the YouTube special, that'd be great. Leave a comment. If you, please, actually, if anyone's listening, please subscribe because like, I'm close to getting enough subscribers so I can monetize this motherfucker. Yeah, Dude, like that. yeah, yeah, that's where the real money comes in. Start putting those ads in the middle. I would say do yeah. uh, do YouTube shorts, man. Like, click, take that special. Take your whole yep. special and clip it into one minute parts and just start uploading them onto your channel because YouTube shorts get put into a different feed than main videos, like the bigger, longer videos. And so they get exposed to a new audience. So you'll be actually shown to more people with those like one minute micro pieces of content. Are you giving me advice, Johnny? Is that what's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I actually, that's... That... That's uh, that's actually something that uh, my goal for the New Year's do that. I know I I realized the the because my special I just put out and it just the really good numbers. Great and man, big numbers. Back. Yeah. So so now I realize it's like if I chop this up, put it on YouTube, shorts, TikTok, and put more eyes on the special, 
Uh, it just I was just I'm a very I was very slow into the accepting of social media as a thing mm-hmm. that I had to do. A lot of comics are the same. So I just got I but the special putting the special it was actually pretty good because it gave, it made me realize I was like oh there's value in this a lot of people want to see it people want content <clears throat> so my, I I I'm just now just learning how to edit and put all that stuff out so that's uh again focusing on that and uh yeah because I'm building an audience of people that don't even like they, they live outside of Canada they live yeah. out, like in the world and they're like. Everyone, more for the most part, like has been very positive, and they're like, "Oh, you're great! I've never heard of you. Why are you not more established than what you are?" And I'm like, and it gave me like a good bit of encouragement because sometimes you're like, "Oh, I don't know how to do that. I'm comedy, or where I'm going, whatever." But then all these people around the world are watching it. And you realize there's so many other places out there. Like, <laughs> you could yeah. be huge in Denmark. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we have no idea. Like, unless you put it out there and be like, "Wow, I have," you know. There's 10,000 people that live in the Netherlands that really like my stuff. Maybe I'll go do a show there. And then you end up booking yeah. out a theater or something crazy, right? Yeah. Like, that's the power of the yeah. internet, man. It gets rid of those gatekeepers. You do everything yourself. Yeah, no, it's definitely true. I've realized that, yeah, because not, yeah, the, the Canadian comedy industry isn't going to give you anything. No. no one's going to hand you in. And also, these days, no one cares about anything other than your TikTok following anyway, right? So, but, but there is, I've realized from, Known guys like Nima and Che Arena and all these guys, it's like you can create a band fan base around the world, mm-hmm. uh, and oh, like skip those, skip through all these gatekeepers and all these industry people, and there's people that actually want to see you. Because sometimes yeah. you're like, oh, I. Because sometimes people get so low on themselves and they don't think they have a fan base, but I'm like, there's a fan base out for most people. I think if you have a unique point of view. And if you're being yourself, that's what I think. Yeah. That's why I'm like, just be who you are and you'll find other people who are just like you because there's not that many different types of humans. <laughs> and, like, and, the, and the thing is as well, but the only difference is it's work. It, it's hard work. Yeah. Um, and it's evolution it of comedy. Like, you have to learn how yeah. to edit. You have to learn how to like use this new interface to help you. Like, It's no different than somebody going from, you know, voice recording their set on a tape to now I got to set up a camcorder and learn how that camera works. Yeah, I mean, when I first started doing comedy, people were still using voice recorders. <laughs> it's crazy. People, yeah, 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 Stacks yeah, of tapes. Like, yeah, and like people were using like iPhones and like, you know, just just recording the audio, you know, yeah, yeah. themselves. Uh, and the, the last few years, it's just gone and it's gone crazy. But like, you know, it, that's the new evolution of comedy. If, you, if you're not getting on board with it, then again, you're, you're not going to level up yourself. And, uh, and now, yeah, you can find people who want to see. So, you, yeah, I can become famous in Denmark and play theaters in Denmark. You know what I mean? Like, in, there's, no, there's no way that that would have happened had the internet or social media happened like this. So, yeah, so it's fucking so there, phenomenal. So as, much, so as much as social media is like work and it sucks and it can be draining and you're like, <clears> oh, fuck, right? Because it's, it's like running. Exactly, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. but, that's, but that's exactly the Payoff is so much time. better. Yeah, yeah. It sucks, but like once, yeah, little by little, you get better at it, better at it, you get faster, you get stronger, you get, and then with social media, you get better at it, it becomes quicker, but just actually just, and it, and one thing actually, actually, you know, going back to the 15-year-old self, it's like, actually what I'd like to say is like, give yourself permission to succeed. Cause that's what mm. I'm trying to do now. It's like, so it's like, even with social media, it's like, oh, who wants to watch this shit? Yeah, that's or the give, worst, that block. Give yourself give yourself permission to be like, no, I can succeed. Go for it. You know, the worst case scenario for me is like, hey, I give myself permission to succeed and it doesn't work out. But like, I've already succeeded anyway because I'm already doing, I'm already a professional stand-up comedian. Isn't that, that's fucking crazy. That's crazy. Like, that, to me, that if you just said that to my 15-year-old self, he would be so happy. Or you'd be like, no fucking way, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, do you know what I mean? So the fact that I've I've managed to carve out a career and a thing that most people like would dream of doing, I've already succeeded. Mm-hmm. It's just taking it to the next thing. So as long as I don't quit and give up on myself, I'll succeed. Yeah. And as much I'll succeed as much I'll I'll go as much to X as much levels as much work as I put in, right? So my success is based on how much I put into it, right? So you know, it's uh, it's 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 really. I mean, it's quite a daunting thing to think about, but it's also like you can, you can do it, and I think anyone can do it. And there's so much, 
people sometimes think that there's not enough space for every comic or whatever. There's so much room for everyone, you know. Um, and you just need to find your audience and your niche and work at it and don't quit, you know. I love that, man. We're going to wrap the podcast right there. I think that's a beautiful way to end it. (laughs) Dude, thanks so much for making the time. I honestly really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Thank you. That was a great tip. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. I'll send you off the link as soon as it's up. Sweet. Okay. Cool. All right. Take care, everybody. All good? Yeah, yeah. We'll wrap it here. I'm just going to hit. I'm going to hit end, and I'm going to jump off. Good night, everybody. (laughs) Good night, John. See ya. You've been listening to The Johnny Rogers Show. New episodes air every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.